All right, I'm joined now by uh, Jamie Keane, who's uh, the lead uh, multiplayer producer for uh, for Battlefield Bad Company. Just um, just give us a bit of a background about the game for people that might not have uh, heard about it before. So Battlefield um, obviously is a is a really strong multiplayer franchise, but with this sort of version, we're really trying to add in a, a, a strong single player sort of story driven single player as well. So you're going to get both sides. You're going to get the the really core Battlefield gameplay. You know, lots of vehicles, lots of weapons, uh, and then you're also going to get this story driven single player on top of that as well. But probably the biggest thing on top of that all is the destruction. It's really something that we really added in, and it adds this really big new dimension to the game. It really changes things up. We call it tactical destruction because it it really does add this new tactical element, particularly in the multiplayer. You know, you really have to think like in 360 degrees, you know, people are going to be coming from all sides and uh, it really, really opens it up. Was, was the destruction element something that kind of evolved while you were developing the game or did you say outright we want to do destructibility in this game, that's what's going to be key about it? It was something that, yeah, we, we set that bar from the start. We were like, yeah, we want to make this, as, I mean, we set off saying we want to make this 100% destructible, we want to make everything blowing up and everything like that. And then as we started to implement it, we started to understand the gameplay implications of it. You know, we didn't, it's kind of the Pandora's box. You open yeah. it up and it's like, oh my God, this is quite a lot more complicated than we thought it was going to be. But no, I mean, it's really, we were really pleasantly surprised by the, by the the way that it impacts the gameplay and stuff as well. I mean, we really thought that you know it's, it's really it really does bring this whole new element to the game. And you kind of go back to playing other Battlefield games and other shooters and stuff, and it's like, oh, I really want to be able to blow through that wall, and you just get really frustrated by it. But, but no, it's really good. We're really pleased with it. So obviously, there's been a few Battlefield games now. I mean, mainly for the for the PC. But I mean, how does this, this game fit into the overall universe? And uh, I mean, it's just completely separate to to all the other games that have been developed already. Yeah, obviously with Bad Company we really wanted to get out on the next-gen titles and onto the next-gen platforms and really get a good, strong franchise out for the first for our first outing onto them. So, uh, again, the gameplay you're going to really recognise and a lot of the skills that you've developed for the, for the PC titles are going to transfer over. There's going to be a lot of stuff that you recognise in there as well. But again, the single player is going to really set it apart. I mean, we've had single player in Battlefield games before, but it's been much more sort of bot-matchy. Whereas this time, you know, we've really gone to town with the characters, really gone to town with the whole feel and the tone of things and really tried to sort of pull that sort of side of things out. We can see uh, a bit of the game uh, being playing on the screen here. Just, can you tell us a little bit about this particular uh, map and, and what we can expect from it in the game? Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, this is Harvest Day. This is one of the we have kind of two different types of maps. We've got like uh, more infantry-based maps and then more vehicle-based maps. The infantry uh, tend to be a bit closer in. This is a vehicle-based map. It's kind of a larger setup. You, you said that you wanted to to create it, so it's quite simple to get into at the beginning. You know, when you're setting up your uh, your character and choosing what you want to, want to play, what weapons you want to play with, and so. Yeah, I mean, we've we've kept the kind of the you know the, the choices available to the player but we wanted to try and make that as, as accessible as possible for people. So, you know, you're going to have all the, all the class-based gameplay that you're seeing from other Battlefield titles, but we really tried to pare down the UI so that, uh, you know, so that you can see where, the, where, where you're going to be choosing and the weapons that you're going to be choosing, where you're going to spawn in, particularly with the spawning. You know, we've lost the map from the mini-map because, you know, it's much more important about just, you know, one of two choices so you get straight into the action. You kind of choose to spawn back at the base where you're going to see all your vehicles and all those sorts of things, or you're going to spawn in your squad, which is going to throw you right into the middle of the action, which is, you know, as you can see probably from here, I mean, it gets it does get really intense when you get only 24 guys all mm -hmm. fighting around that same area it gets yeah it's a lot of fun <laughs> and that's that's the that's the maximum number of players in this version for both the 360 and the PlayStation yeah. 3 yeah 24 players across both yeah okay. um we saw uh, before uh, some really cool weapons uh, you know can you tell us a little bit about like the tracer one you know where you can get the rockets to trace and tell us a little bit about how that works so there's a lot of weapons in there that kind of they're, they're more for the advanced user especially like you mentioned the tracer dart that's probably our most advanced you know that requires some really quite tight coordination mm -hmm. so one guy you know he played specialist class he's going to shoot the tracer dart it's going to tag a vehicle and then the other guys in his team that are on demolitions class they can then look through the scope of their rocket launchers and they'll pick it up and when you get like two or three guys coordinated to Doing that, if you're in a tank, just forget it. Was there was there anything that stands out from what you what the, the community was feeding back to you that, that really changed what you were thinking uh, about the game? I think probably the strongest thing was conquest. Uh, you know, we we, we were you know, we got a lot of feedback saying, oh, we really miss conquest. You know, we really want to see it in there and stuff. Which is an old mode from previous battlefields, yeah. and it's going to be developed and released post release for free, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be free downloadable content afterwards. Uh, once the team have finished developing the game, then we're going to move them over. So we can't commit to any dates right now, but it's going to be free. Uh, we're really excited about getting it out there for people. We think it's going to. You know, really reward the people that know the Conquest game mode for the people that haven't played it before. It's mm -hmm. going to be this really good counterpoint for the for the intensity of Gold Rush. So, mm -hmm. uh, and also getting destruction into Conquest. I think that's going to you know tick a few boxes for people. It's something that we're really pleased about seeing. It really it really changes it up again, which is which is good to see. So Conquest is quite different to the Gold Rush mode. Just just tell us how it works. So Conquest, yeah, it's uh, based on capping um, capping flags. Basically, you'll have a, a, a selection of flags that spread out across a map, and then basically it's it, the, the the team that owns the most number of flags at any given point will win the map. So um, just tell us uh, when the game's set for release, got a firm release date and, and what platforms we can expect uh, yeah. to see it on. 
Uh, so it's going to be releasing on Xbox 360 and PS3 the end of June. I think it's like a 27th release in Europe and a 24th release in the US. So we're really looking forward to getting it out there. All right, great. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much for your time.